Welcome to the Cybersecurity Speaker Series, presented by NSA's Cybersecurity Collaboration Center. Our mission is to augment and amplify NSA's ability to prevent and eradicate threats to national security systems and the defense industrial base. By establishing open, robust, and collaborative relationships across industry and government. Through bi-directional threat intelligence sharing and joint analytic tradecraft development, these partnerships leverage unique talents and capabilities to enhance cybersecurity across the nation. In this series, you'll hear about the work we do here and its real-world applications, bringing these insights to you through some of the top minds at NSA. Welcome to the Speaker Series from NSA's Cybersecurity Collaboration Center. My name is Josiah Dykstra. I'm a technical fellow here at NSA. In this speaker series, we invite NSA employees to come talk about their experiences their, and their contributions in the field of cybersecurity. Our topic today is Ghidra, the free and open source reverse engineering framework developed here at NSA. And my guest is Brian Knighton, a senior researcher and one of the developers of Ghidra. Brian, thanks for joining me. It's great to be here. First, congratulations to you and the Ghidra team. The last couple of years since Ghidra was released, I see it everywhere. I hear great <laughs> things about it. Yeah. So kudos to all of you. Thank you. I wonder if you can start by just describing reverse engineering. What is that? What is it used for? And sure. how does a tool like Ghidra help that? Sure, sure. So if you think about when you write a, 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 a program for a computer, you start with something in a, a a, a programming language, something like C or Java, and it's human readable, so you can actually see what the program does. It has all the all the names of the functions and what it does. It's, it, you can you can easily read it and understand it, much like you were if, if if you were reading a book or a novel. Um, but after I write that program, or someone writes a program in that high level language like C or Java, it gets compiled into um, into some code that only only the actual computer can understand. It's it's um, it's kind of like the the ones and zeros that would run on the actual computer. And then I can send out that 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 program as the ones and zeros to um, so that someone could run on their computer. Like like if I wanted to write an application, a computer program for you, I write it in Java. I would compile it. I would send you the binary, the ones and zeros, and you could run it on your computer. But now, what if you wanted to verify the program I sent you was doing what it was supposed to? do like um, so like you wanted to make sure it wasn't malware or didn't have any bad behavior or if it was just doing what I said it was you would use a tool like Ghidra because Ghidra can load in that machine code and then it'll convert it back to a high level language so so that a human can better understand what those ones and zeros are doing and it also has the ability to add back in all that all that information that was lost like the function names and what and what they do, so it makes it, it it takes a computer program that's binary and not and not very human readable and converts it back to something that is human readable. Yeah, very useful capability for lots of use cases. Yeah, lots of use cases, absolutely. So why did NSA release this to the public? Has it has it done what you hoped it to do? Has it gotten the adoption that you you expected? Sure, sure. So like we we put it out for for several reasons. One was. Cybersecurity is now a, a like a vital skill that that folks need to have, and it's important to NSA and to our nation to make sure that um, folks are trained up on cybersecurity and can help uh, um, analyze all the different systems that are running software now, which is many and growing every day. Um, so it's it's a, it's and we also wanted to sort of what we call like level the playing field which is give folks access to a cutting edge tool for doing cybersecurity. Whereas prior to that, there were tools available, but may have been out of the reach of some folks like due to cost and, and things like that. So now here's an open source tool that anyone can access in, in high school, in college, and it's free and open source. Um, so they can, um, they can easily, easily get access to it. And I would say, yes, it's definitely exceeded um, you know, our, our expectations. Um, I mean, there's been over 1 million downloads total since it was put out, which is, which is shocking, you know, to me at least. Like, like we sort of had a joke when it was going out, like, "Hey, how many downloads do you think it'll be the first week?" And I was way, I was way off. I thought it was gonna be like five thousand, maybe, and it was in the eighty thousands. So, I mean, that was just in the first week. So, it was, it's, it's, it's been great. That's excellent. And the development has continued. It wasn't just a one-time thing. Absolutely. Uh, I know both the, you, the Ghidra team, and also the outside developers have continued to add features over time. There has. 
and there's a new big release. Tell, tell us a little bit of what is in version 10 and yes, what does that mean? Yes, version 10 just came out. I'd say the biggest feature that people were looking for for 10 was the debugger. And what that allows you to do is look at a program sort of in its natural habitat as it's actually running on a system, which is very important because there's, there's aspects of looking at a program um, statically as like sort of a photograph of a tiger as opposed to it running you know, in the jungle, which is kind of be like sort of behaves a lot differently, right? Sure. So a a program, um, if you if you can use Geezer's debugger, you can look at that program how it's actively running because there are things that get set up by a program when it's running that you can't view statically if you're just looking at the at the bytes. So that was certainly the most anticipated feature. I think it's been pretty well received. There's also been a lot of other features added in 10, um, support for different formats of, of binaries as well as processor support, which is the actual CPUs that are in computers. So th there's, there's, there was a, a large amount of features added to 10. Congratulations, That's, yeah. that sounds like a big accomplishment. Yeah, it's pretty great. Tell us a little bit about how you've heard people are using Deidre. What kind of scenarios, for example, are they applying? Sure, sure. I would say it's certainly um, things like malware. Um, if, if a system has malware, people want to load that malware into Ghidra because you can then understand what the malware is doing um, and also figure out how to get rid of the malware, which is also very important. Yeah. Um, other folks are using it to, 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 to like look at IoT devices. Um, and, and one of the most recent things I would say has become an IoT device are cars. Modern cars now have things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and cellular in them, which makes them, you know, open to cybersecurity risks. So we, so we want to make sure that, you know, um, so folks want to make sure that vehicles are safe. And, and recently, we've been, um, I've been collaborating with uh, Morgan State University to look at vehicle systems to make sure that they're safe and secure, because NSA cares about secure vehicles for NSA, but also for the nation as well. So it's, it's quite, a, quite an important uh, place to look. Yeah, that's a pretty timely and important yeah. use case. I, I'm glad that you're doing it with them. Thanks. Talk to me a little bit about uh, education. How is Ghidra used for teaching students, for uh, developing interest in it, and, and maybe even for research? Sure, so, um, so from its onset, um, we, we actually built Ghidra, which, was, which has been a sort of in development now for about 20 years. We built it as a platform to do resource on. It was, it was built as a platform that could easily be extended to grow as the cybersecurity space changed, which is um, which 20 years ago, it was, it was probably less fluid than it is now, but it's, it's become quite, quite uh, a changing space with new devices constantly being added to the internet um, and, and new devices being like, you know, 20 years ago, your TV didn't have Bluetooth, but now it does and things like that. So with Ghidra, you can use that as a platform to uh, study a new device and then add new features to add, add new features in the Ghidra that will support that device. Things like analyzers to find the code and the bind, like that's like the executable code that's inside the binary, as well as support to um, analyze that machine code that I mentioned earlier for that particular device if Ghidra didn't currently support it. So there's... Yeah, you had mentioned IoT a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. That seems like an area of tremendous growth and lots of potential for uh, making sure that those systems are secure. Yes. Do you see Ghidra playing an important role there? Absolutely, absolutely. Be, um, because because um, you can you can take Ghidra and extend it to support new devices as they come out. It is certainly a <clears throat> an important place to build on research to help secure new devices as they as they emerge. That's great. I hope lots of people take up that opportunity. Uh, as do I. How do people get started? If they want to download Ghidra or learn more about it, if this is maybe the first time they've heard about it, where should they go? Sure, sure. They can start with their website. It's ghidra-sre.org. That is the, um, the uh, main website for accessing Ghidra. And from there, you can also access the GitHub page, which is where all of the source code is uh, for Ghidra, because Ghidra is all, all open source. You can pull down the source and make your own build. Um, and from there, you can also access our um, website at nsa.gov if you wanted to apply for a job and actually um, join NSA and help help secure a nation. Yeah, this is a skill that I know we need and people coming in already knowing it is uh, valuable to us. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Brian. That's all the time that we have for today. Uh, keep an eye on the NSA Twitter feed at NSA Cyber for the announcement of future talks. Thank you for listening today. I'll see you next time.